Good morning, rise and shine. Looking out there with live cam, it looks really pretty. It's kind of a pleasant morning at 75 degrees. You see the sun coming out there, right there. Very nice. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everyone. It is 6 a.m. on Tuesday, June 11th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a wonderful Monday. We hope you had a chance to enjoy the rain. And if you didn't, you might get a chance today. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed because, you know, we can always use the rain or li these little breaks while we can take them. Yes, which you'd like to see a lot more of these breaks, but uh, hopefully we get something today because I don't know if we're going to have many breaks after tomorrow. So uh, when you step outside right now, it's fairly pleasant out there. We're starting to see a little bit of the glow of the sunrise with a few clouds left over here and there. As far as the uh, heat index, when you factor in the humidity, which is not outrageous, it feels like 77 degrees based on a temperature temperature that's in the mid 70s right now. So everybody's in the mid to upper 70s yeah, and just enough of that kind of summertime humidity. All right, watching a couple of uh, that that sell out there to the northwest. There was one earlier this morning that looked like it was going to be moving in our direction and it just fell apart. This one uh, is almost looking like in spots that it is trying to weaken. We've got those two distinct cells right there. We'll obviously keep an eye on this thing if it decides to work its way into, say, northern Valverde County or even northern Edwards County over the course of the next hour or so. But what this is, it's kind of the uh, one of the, the little bits of, of energy that's being spun around a big low up in the uh, northern portion right around the panhandle of the state. So that's pulling these bits of energy in here. Later on this afternoon, we're going to have a couple of more of those move on in here. And some of those may be with the afternoon heating producing strong to potentially severe storms. So there is the risk all around the area, but especially in northwest portions of the hill country. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with that mold is on the low side, but after the rain yesterday, it's going to be interesting to see what the count is when that comes out later on this morning. Throughout the rest of today, mid 70s this morning, a few clouds hanging around there, and then we'll make it up to 88 at noon, almost uh, up to the normal high. Normal high right now is 92 degrees. We'll hit that mid afternoon and then top off at 95 later on today. There's that 30% chance for one or two of those storms out there. So again, overall, the chances of rain are not that great, just kind of the spotty storms here and there. But if you do get one of the storms, like I said, they could be on the strong side, even along with some hefty downpours like what we had yesterday. And some of those may actually extend into the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning. More on that coming up in a closer look at Father's Day weekend. Yes, it's the day for dads out there. Which should be every day, right, folks? Anyway, RJ Mark. For you, Mike, yes, going? absolutely, yes. Happy early Father's Day. Ah, uh, thanks. <laughs> For you. All right, uh, Trans Guy traffic cameras. Loop 410, Old Pearsall Road. Traffic moving pretty well both directions there. Same situation as we take a look at this other camera here, Ray Allison. 1604 Gold Canyon had some overnight construction that has been cleared out of the area. Actually, we saw our photojournalist, Alex Gomez. He was at 1604 a little bit earlier. It sounds like he's made his way to the downtown area. So let's go ahead and check in with Alex and see how things are looking out there. Alex, what can you tell us? Morning, RJ. Right now, I am driving in the downtown area. This is 35 South at Cesar Chavez. You know, yesterday, this time yesterday, it felt like I was driving in a hurricane. Not the case this morning. Right now, drier roads and daylight is starting to break. So visibility is very good this morning. It should be a safer drive as you head out. Happy Tuesday, RJ. All right, happy Tuesday to you as well. Alex, we'll continue checking with Alex throughout the rest of our hour here on uh, Good Morning San Antonio. Do want to let you know about uh, this incident that's being reported, stalled vehicle, Loop 410 northbound right there at Ingram Road. Now, our uh, camera's not showing, indicating, or not uh, telling us anything at the moment, but we will check in with Transguide here in just a bit. And we're not, also not seeing any delays with traffic flow in the area, so it looks like traffic is still moving through there. We'll check in with Transguide here in just a bit. Patty, Stephanie, back to you guys. All right, thanks, RJ. New this morning, a man is in the hospital after a stabbing on the city's west side. San Antonio police say it started with a fight between neighbors. It happened after 3.30 this morning on the 2500 block of West Commerce Street. A couple who says they were threatened by a neighbor found their door kicked in after they came home. Now their neighbor came out and started a fight, which ended in a stabbing. The husband who was stabbed is expected to be okay, and the neighbor was detained by police, but at this time, no word on any charges. Looking ahead, a former John Jay High School student charged with murder will go to trial this fall. 
Jesus San Miguel is accused of stabbing and killing another student in April of last year. Now, jury selection is set for September 27th, with testimony beginning on October 7th. San Miguel's attorney said a plea deal could also get done if a deal is not reached. San Miguel faces life in prison if found guilty. Looking ahead, more money is on the way for those who work at SAISD. The Board of Trustees approved a 2% general pay raise for all full-time permanent employees. New incoming teachers will also receive an increased entry salary of $58,400, and employees with certain roles in special education, deaf education, and facilities maintenance will be considered for raises. Well, topping your morning headlines, jury deliberations have started in Hunter Biden's federal gun trial. He has pleaded not guilty on three charges accused of illegally buying a possessing a gun while abusing or being addicted to drugs. And the case represents the first time a sitting U.S. president's child has been on trial. Last week, President Biden said he would not pardon his son if he is found guilty. And new this morning, new video is being released showing the moments Israeli forces rescued four hostages held by Hamas in Gaza. ABC's Rachel Bade brings us the latest from Washington, including the push for a ceasefire in that region. This morning, new pictures showing the moment Israeli commandos stormed a residential building in Gaza to free some of the hostages. In the video from Israeli Defense Forces, you can see one hostage holding up his arms, the other two nearby, terror on their faces. Suddenly, an explosion nearby rocking the rescue mission. An Israeli soldier telling them, everything's all right, we've come to rescue you. Then, a dangerous escape. Bullets flying. Two hostages running for their lives, soldiers escorting them to a chopper to be flown to safety. Sources telling ABC News that Israeli special forces had gone undercover, disguised as Palestinian refugees, waiting for the green light from on high to execute their mission. The IDF saying it launched the airstrike only after it came under fire. Monira, who lives nearby, pleading for peace. We have hearts. We are a human being. We want peace to be all over the area. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in the region pushing for a ceasefire, imploring allies to pressure Hamas into accepting the terms put forward in recent days, which Blinken said Israel has accepted. The only party that has not accepted, the only party that's not said yes, is Hamas. But back in Israel, it's all smiles and hugs for the families of the hostages. They're overjoyed to finally be reunited with their loved ones. I slept all night with a smile. What a big relief. That's what I want to happen for all the families of the hostages. This morning, we're learning that the U.S. is considering a new strategy to try to free eight Americans still held in Gaza. The Biden administration reportedly considering direct negotiations with Hamas, negotiations that won't include Israel. Rachel Bade, ABC News, Washington. And before we go to break, Apple is outlining how artificial intelligence would change the way you use your smartphone. The company says its own brand of AI Apple intelligence will be able to summarize your emails, proofread your text messages, and generate customized images and emojis. Despite privacy concerns, Apple insists the AI feature will not save your data and says it will allow independent experts to inspect its service servers for privacy protections. Now, many of the new features will come out this fall. And the time now is 6.08 and 75 degrees for now. After the break, Methodist Children's Hospital is expanding their pediatric intensive care unit, how it can help families through difficult situations. Let's look out there with live cam right now. Let's enjoy that 75 degrees because we know things will heat up, but there's a chance of rain throughout our area, so that's good news for the most part. We're going to be checking in with Mike for those chances coming up. Hey, good morning. Welcome back. It is 612. Well, the newly expanded pediatric intensive care unit is up and running at Methodist Children's Hospital. Case at 12 producer Haley Powers got behind the scenes look at the new unit and how it will help families in our community. From premature babies to teens battling cancer, Methodist Children's Hospital is dedicated to helping families through difficult situations. 
That's one of the reasons the hospital system has officially opened their newly expanded pediatric intensive care unit. The unit really is a state-of-the-art unit. We bought all new medical equipment. We have all the advanced um, kind of services that patients need in order to have just the best care possible within San Antonio and beyond. On top of the new equipment, the PICU was able to hire more nursing staff to help serve the 24 new beds that will be filled with children. And with the unit moving to its own floor, it now has its own resources to treat patients. So previously we would share a unit and share ICU resources, and now this um, separate floor gives us the resources dedicated to our um, pediatric ICU patients. Dr. Adriana Lopez has worked as a pediatric intensivist for Methodist Children's for 16 years. She says the goal is to provide families in need with a sense of normalcy. The colors are beautiful, they're nice and calm, the rooms are, are quite large and um, you know good accommodations for, um, for parents too during stressful times. PICU is part of a $15 million expansion project with the Methodist Health System. CEO Rachel Goldsmith says their hope is to make the trips to the hospital a little less scary for kids. And we have really the best doctors, the best clinical care in order to take care of their patients. They can feel confident that they'll have the best quality of care here. The new PICU officially opened at the end of last month and is already serving families. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. Well, the time now is 614 and the roads from this angle look okay. Yeah, pretty good looking um, scene out there this morning, aren't they? Yeah, guys, starting to see things pick up a little bit out there as people make their way out during our six o'clock hours. We take a look at some of our trans guy traffic cameras up there in the north side of town. We saw 281 in that one shot, 410 Blanco Road traffic moving pretty good both directions there. South side, southeast side, 410 Villa Main traffic moving pretty good both directions right there. Do want to let you know about this ongoing situation on the northeast side of town because we're seeing a couple different things pop up right now on our map as we're going to go to that here in just a bit and we're seeing some major backup now on I-35 South at Olympia Parkway. So this is going to be right here the Selma area, basically Evans Road further down south to Live Oak, a little bit going to Topperwine Road. We're seeing a couple different incidents in this area. We also have a uh, crash being reported right there at Pat Booker Road uh, near Kitty Hawk, that area right there. Pat Booker not being on the highway, but still a major street that a lot of people use in the northeast side and also a stalled vehicle being reported on northbound 35 right now. So so this is kind of the biggest trouble spots that we're seeing at the moment. Alex Gomez is on the roads for us as well. Our photojournalist extraordinaire. And uh, let's go ahead and check in with him and see how things are going. Alex, last time we saw you, you were in uh, downtown San Antonio area. Yeah, good morning, RJ. I went from downtown to the west side and I just left 151. So haven't seen too many issues over here on the west side and the northwest side. I just got on 410. Right now I'm near Ingram Road, but uh, issue free over here. I haven't seen too many accidents being reported, RJ. Alex, uh, stay with us real quick. Any further thoughts on the Dallas Cowboys offseason? <laughs> you hit a nerve there. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I like the Dallas Cowboys. They're my team. I'm just saying there's a new team right now in San Antonio, the Brahmas. Good job. I, I know they got a big game coming up, so good luck to them. Yes. Your thought, yes. That should be the, the Father's Day gift right there. Yes. Your, your thoughts on the Lions going to the Super Bowl this year, Alex? Uh-oh. Oh, uh, no chance. Oh, <laughs> Alex, our, what are you uh, getting live, yourself into, Alex? <laughs> our live traffic reporter Thank and now you, giving Alex. us uh, some hot takes in the sports world. I know. <laughs> no, it's not, stuff. It's not liked, wrong. Yeah, I liked him up until yeah. now. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know what I think we should do? Mm. I don't know if he's listening right now. Let's <laughs> tell him listening. it's <laughs> buy breakfast tacos for your crew. Oh, uh, 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 he hooked uh, uh, us up with the donuts last week. Here he goes, donuts. Well, that's what I'm saying. And so we can tell him that on the next. <laughs> it's it's oh. our turn to buy for Alex. It's our turn. Yeah. <laughs> like he didn't like my turn. Okay. Okay. He didn't like that one, did he? We'll pay my him. turn. We'll pay him back. You know, okay. it was a, a gorgeous picture yesterday and uh yes, the crepuscular rays of the sun shining there. Great shot. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, got some clouds hanging around here this morning, and we'll keep a, a few of them around throughout the course of the day. Now, as far as rain, we're watching this uh, little cluster of some storms out here, and it does appear, even though we still have some pretty good lightning strikes in the uh, kind of the, the western edge of this, notice how that little cell almost appears like it is starting to sort of die down. And there were a couple of more 
earlier this morning and as this loops on through here, watch how that first cell just sort of died off. This next one looks like it's going to be doing the same thing, but then as we go into this afternoon, that low is going to throw more of these on in here. So there's the computer model having this one die off the one that's out there right now, but then by later on this afternoon and this evening, a few more of those uh, showers and thunderstorms are going to be popping up. But again, just kind of take in the big picture. There ain't much out there, so rain chances overall are not great. However, something does develop, it can become strong to potentially severe because once again, we've got a pretty volatile atmosphere out here. So this is going to be the situation into this evening and then also in the overnight hours. So tomorrow morning, we'll have to obviously keep an eye on this line right here. But tomorrow morning has the potential of shaping up like yesterday morning did with that line of showers and thunderstorms working its way on through the area. And then a lot of those are going to be sort of fizzling on out and most of them will. We still may have a few leftover stray showers around the area throughout the course of the day tomorrow, but it'll just be again count them on one hand type situation. As far as the severe risk, yes, there is that chance. High winds, hail being the biggest threats. The Most all of the area has that risk, but the greatest threat obviously is up there in portions of the hill country. And then on top of the potential for a severe storm, there may be some hefty downpours as well, since we do have a fair amount of humidity out there. All right, here's what the upper level winds are looking like right now. We've got this high, which is just far enough off to the west and southwest of us to keep us in this northwesterly flow. So that's what's bringing in those little disturbances from that low up there in the panhandle. So that's good news for us when it's in this position. However, what's going to be happening is this will traverse the state and pretty much the center of the high is going to be parked over there in the southeast. So that puts us around this clockwise flow, getting the heat pumped in here and some moisture. However, what looks kind of encouraging is we get one of these uh, lows coming in here, sort of an inverted trough, if you will, that comes in from the Gulf of Mexico. This would potentially be a rainmaker for us. Kind of a wait and see situation that's still a week away, but what we're going to have to do is then see if uh, some of those storms will maybe develop by next week. That's going to be, like I said, a wait and see situation today. Mid 90s, showers and a few thunderstorms out there. We'll keep an eye on that one out to the northwest this morning, obviously. But like I said, there are indications that it is starting to kind of weaken. And then later on this afternoon, a few more are going to be popping up around the area. And tomorrow, a leftover here or there. Then we start to heat on up into the weekend. Triple digits going into uh, the weekend as well as the first part of next week. And we'll watch out for maybe something trying to come in here to give some rain chance from the Gulf. But right now, it's just kind of keep your fingers crossed for that. All right. We will continue to keep our fingers crossed because the break we got yesterday was nice. Yes. Yeah. And, and then potentially, I mean, you know, knock on wood, tomorrow morning, a similar situation with some of those developing tonight. Let's hope so. Very good. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mike. Time right now, 621, 75 degrees out there. Well, just ahead, Apple's unveiling the long-awaited artificial intelligence technology that's coming to the iPhone, how it could affect your devices in today's GMA First Look. Dupixin helps people with asthma breathe better in as little as two weeks. And when you can breathe better, what isn't better? This is better. This is better. That's better. And that. Even this. Dupixin is an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. It works with your asthma medicine to help improve lung function. That's pretty good. Dupixin is not for sudden breathing problems. It's proven to help prevent asthma attacks. It can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And doesn't that make things better? Dupixin can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Tell your doctor right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about new or worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change your stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. When you can get more out of your lungs, you can do more with less asthma. And isn't that better? Ask your doctor about Dupixin, the most prescribed biologic in asthma. In this morning's GMA First Look, 
The new AI features coming to your iPhone. Apple announcing what it says will be game-changing updates. Generative AI called Apple Intelligence to be integrated across its devices. The company changing everything from how you write emails to what Siri can do for you. This is bringing AI to Apple's ecosystem. 2.2 billion iOS devices, largest install base in the world. This is marking a new chapter. Silicon servers offer the privacy. Apple emphasizing their focus on security, detailing in their presentation how the new technology was built with privacy in mind. That's a huge part of their strength. It's a lockbox. So Apple doesn't really have privacy issues. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have more of what you need to know about Apple's AI revolution. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. Texas is proud to be the home of Beaver Applin and the growing Bucky's empire. Well, Luling is now home to the world's largest Bucky's, and Governor Greg Abbott was there yesterday as the massive store opened for business. The new location spans 75,000 square feet, has 120 gas pumps, and will employ about 200 people. Luling is on I-10 between here and Houston, only about an hour away from San Antonio, so you can read all about it right now on our website at KSAT.com. Also on KSAT.com, a chance to help someone in need. Baptist Health System is asking for donations for this year's Healthy Over Hungry Cereal Drive. All week long, you can donate cereal boxes to any of the five Baptist Health hospitals. Last year, the hospital system collected nearly four thousand pounds of cereal and this year they're hoping to collect more. You can head to our website to find out how to donate. And for all of you Peso Pluma fans out there, four tickets to his July 27th concert at the Frost Bank Center are up for grabs on our website KSAT.com. So right now all you have to do to enter is be a KSAT insider and sign up on our website. You have until 1150 p.m. this Saturday night to enter and good luck to all of you. All right, time right now, 627, 75 degrees out there. Let's look outside with Transguide. Things were looking pretty good. Uh, this shot at I-35 at Topper Wine. Things are actually moving in I-35. That's a good sign. Loop 1604, that other shot looked very green. We're going to get a uh, check in with RJ very soon. Taking a live look outside, a little cloudy, but the sun is peeking out this morning. Mike has your forecast coming up. Hi, good morning. Welcome back. It is 630 and we made it to Tuesday, June 11th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We have your weather. We also have some ideas for Father's Day. Mike, your turn. Ideas. Oh, gosh. Day for everybody um, looking for Father's Day gifts. Let's see. Nice steak on the grill. Um, a second steak on the grill. <laughs> okay. A, a good on the meal. Grill next to that. So, um, food. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that'll so work. I'll give you a list in a second. So anyway. Oh, I see. <laughs> but you have your husbands to shop for as well. So, yeah, we got a few clouds hanging out there right now and a few breaks. As Patty was mentioning, we'll keep a few extra clouds hanging around here today and some are going to then give us a little bit of rain later on this afternoon. More on that in just a second. 75 degrees is the current temperature. Normal low is 72. So we're in the ballpark of where we should be this time of year. Everybody's in the 70s with the exception of Bernie up there at 68 degrees. Been watching this little cluster of storms and there was one out ahead of this that fizzled out. It is starting to it, there are indications just kind of watching the number of lightning strikes on here that parts of it are starting to die down, especially this uh, kind of northeastern little uh, cluster right there. This is going to continue to work its way down into Valverde County, but there are in more indications that this will also continue to kind of fizzle on out. It may graze uh, northwestern portions of uh, our part of the hill country later on this morning, but this is just one or the latest in a series of these little disturbances that are going to wrap around around a big low up there uh, right around the panhandle and by later on this afternoon we see a couple of more one or two of those may be strong potentially severe high winds hail are going to be the biggest threats and the greatest threat area is up there in the hill country 
But then again, overall rain chances aren't that great. So that's, you know, one or two of us are going to be seeing them. If you do see something, could become strong. Also, some heavy downpours. Molds on the low side. The updated count is going to be coming out a little bit later on this morning. We're going to make it up to 88 degrees today at noon. And then 95, normal high, 92. Again, kind of in the ballpark, sort of like yesterday. And we'll have that chance for a few showers and thunderstorms. Some of those even extending into tonight. What about, speaking of Father's Day, Gifts. What's the weather going to bring for Dad's Day? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, has been kind of quiet out there this yeah, morning. Yeah, it definitely has. You know, Mike, uh, you definitely notice the difference with all the kiddos out of school, especially when you uh, step outside right now. This is usually a very busy time as we get closer to our 7 o'clock hour. But uh, you know what? Uh, we will take that right now, especially if you're about to step outside. Loop 410, Old Pearsall Road, traffic moving pretty good both directions there. As we take a quick look here at our maps again, the biggest thing that we're going to be seeing at the moment is on the northeast side of town. So let's go ahead and switch over to our maps right now and show you exactly Exactly what we're looking at. Good news. It looks like they have cleared out some of that overnight construction uh, right here on the southbound lanes of 35 at Olympia Parkway. But you do see some major backup still taking place here. Selma up to Evans, uh, up to Evans Road. So definitely a very busy area right now. If you're coming in south right now from the Selma area, we still have this crash being reported at Pat Booker Road at Kitty Hawk. Again, Pat Booker not on one of our major highways, but still a major thoroughfare in that area. And we have a stalled vehicle being reported on northbound 35 if you head up to towards the Topper Wine and the Judson area. One other trouble spot I want to let you know about here real quick, and this is going to be on the uh, west side of town. Uh, this is going to be Loop 410 Ingram Road. So let's go ahead and go over there and show you exactly what we're looking at here. There was a stalled vehicle being reported right there by Holmes High School, but it looks like traffic is actually moving through that area pretty well. All right, coming up, we're going to check it back in with Alex Gomez here in just a little bit. He's headed out to uh, 90 right now, so uh, we'll check in back in with him in a couple of minutes and give you more updates as we get them. Steph Stephanie, Patty, back to you guys. There are safer ways to help the homeless. San Antonio Police Chief posted this message on X over the weekend after a good Samaritan was assaulted and carjacked by the person he was trying to help. Well, our John Paul Baraja spoke to nonprofits in our area about how you can help those in need safely. We don't want people to be afraid of those who are struggling and yet we want to make sure that if you are going to give back to somebody that um, you do it in a safe way. It's a reminder for those who want to help someone in need and a tough lesson San Antonio police say one driver learned Friday night. According to police, the victim stopped his car here on the 1400 block of North Zarzamora to give the suspect, who they say was panhandling at the time, some money. But when he did that, the suspect was able to assault him and steal his car. When SAPD arrived, that suspect took off, eventually crashing into an SAPD marked unit. I don't think it's the best to give out money on the street. There's lots of reasons why that can be troubling, but mostly because it's not a really good long-term solution. Don White Fosdick is with Christian Assistance Ministries. The nonprofit helps those experiencing homelessness. She agrees with Police Chief William McManus to encourage people via social media to find safer ways to help. If they get approached by someone and it seems like a safe location and they can hand someone a dollar, I'm not telling anyone not to do that. But it should serve as a wake-up call that there is a certain risk. Sure, absolutely. You don't know really when you walk up to any stranger on the street. Which is why she always recommends giving back through a nonprofit. Your dollars are going to go a lot further if you're connected to an opportunity to help people in a significant way. Help them, feed them for a couple days as opposed to... That one, one moment where you don't even know if um, what you're doing is good for that person. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Well, again, helping out doesn't have to include donating money. The CEO of Christian Assistance Ministries, who you just heard from, says volunteering can make a big difference. So if you'd like to volunteer, we have a link to find out on our website at KSAT.com. And we also have a KSET Community Town Hall coming up later this week to discuss the impact elder abuse has on our community. Unfortunately, Bear County has more cases of elder abuse and exploitation than any other county in the state. That is why we want to raise awareness about this issue. So join us on Thursday afternoon on KSET Plus as our Avery Everett speaks with experts from Adult Protective Services and Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union about the problem of elder abuse and how to prevent it. 
And new this morning, assault and family violence. More and more kids in our community under the age of 17 are getting arrested for these types of crimes. The latest report by the Juvenile Probation Department shows there's a 32% rise in felony aggravated assault and 11% rise in misdemeanor assault. But what's the community doing to reduce teen crime? In the first three months of this year, 86 teens under the age of 16 years old have been referred to the juvenile detention center on a felony aggravated assault charge. The type of crimes that we're seeing and um, the, the videos that we keep seeing of these crimes is certainly very, very alarming. It's a trend that's been on the rise since so before 2020, says Bear County, County Chief County Juvenile County Probation County. Officer Jill Mata. We're seeing a lot of um, assaults and kind of violent behavior on the part of children. Um, we're not really seeing an increase in the actual uh, aggravated crimes like robbery or sexual assault, but the cases that are coming in are just very, very alarming. As summer approaches, she warns of two weapons kids have easy access to that's getting them into trouble, guns and social media. The increase in children with weapons and their um, display of that are kind of glorifying that on social media. Or when a young person acts up in school, or if they act up after school, if they act up in their neighborhood, but they're still 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, they're telling us they need more support than what they're getting. Ryan Legalia Holland with a partnership helps coordinate support for over 50 local agencies that back after school and youth programs. Right now, only 6% of our city budget is dedicated to child and youth programs. Bottom line, he says, Funding for youth programs in low-income communities could result in a reduction of teen crime, but that takes long-term vision and investment. One of the things that we've proposed is that as the city charter gets voted on this fall, that 20% of all revenue growth in the city be dedicated to children and youth. He thinks creating alternatives and education could help reduce the cycle of poverty in our communities. And again, a partnership helps coordinate nonprofits and school district youth programs. Their goal is to get 70% of teens into college or a certification when they graduate in the next few years. Right now, only about 50% of grads are doing that. And Stephanie, I know you heard one of the problems that they're having is getting kids off their phones because they're, it's so much trouble, right? Especially <laughs> when they're connected to the internet. One of the questions that I asked is at what age? Because kids, I mean, my second grader already wants a phone. Yes. Uh, I mean, I I don't I, I hate to see my daughter like on the phone all the time but what I did like about it it was her um, source of communication during COVID when um, you know she could talk to her friends they were like playing dolls like I guess like on FaceTime and you know doing things like that innocent but, stuff yeah. yeah so I'm like okay with that but like when she starts I was like uh -uh. <laughs> but it just it, unfortunately you like, gotta it, be that yeah it falls on us parent. We, yeah, yeah we have to keep like watching like all the time <laughs> it never see, stops you can see how that's a problem yeah all right time right now 640 75 degrees out there well just ahead San Antonio's public polls will open for the summer this weekend we're gonna look at where and what times are gonna be open in in just a few moments. Welcome back at 644. Well, looking ahead, all of San Antonio's public outdoor pools will open for summer this Saturday. And all 24 pools are free and open six days a week. Most pools will remain open until mid-August, with a few staying open into September. However, the San Antonio Natatorium on Cesar Chavez is closed this summer for renovations. The city is offering outdoor programs, including movies in the pool, group swim lessons and aqua fitness classes for free. Well, also on our website, queso.com, food vendors will bring a melting pot of flavors together at the Sazon Latin Food Night Market this weekend. That market will feature dishes and desserts from the Caribbean, Central America, and South America. Admission is free, but we have a link to register on our website. All right, now we want to get to late breaking news in the medical center. San Antonio police are on the scene of a shooting and looking for a suspect right now. This happened at an apartment complex on Snowden Road. That's near Babcock and Warsbach. We're told the victim, a man in his 30s and four or 40s, was shot in the stomach, leg and arm. He was found inside an apartment. Police are still working to figure out what happened there, but we know there was an argument. Then a man fired shots and took off. Now the victim was taken to the hospital 
Investigators tell us that they are hoping to get more information for witnesses who were there at the time. We're going to keep you posted on this developing story. All right, time right now, 645, 75 degrees already out there. And the roads from this angle look pretty good, RJ, so far. Yeah, guys, starting to see a couple of things pop up as we get closer to our 7 o'clock hour here. Trans guide traffic shots here. We saw that rain come through. Things looking pretty green out there in certain parts of the city. 37 Fair Avenue traffic is moving pretty smooth both directions on the southeast side of town. But again, a couple of things now popping up. Let's check back in with photojournalist Alex Gomez. He's been hitting the roads for us. He's been on 90 over the past uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. And uh, Alex, go ahead and uh, give us an update on what you're seeing out there on the west side of town. Well, the west side's in better shape right now. We did have a disabled vehicle, 90 west, right at Couples, but Tech Heroes on the scene doing the great work that they do. They were able to get that vehicle back on the road, so the left lane should be reopening soon. Other than that, the west side's been uh, pretty good this morning, RJ. All right, thank you very much, Alex, as he continues to drive through the west side of town. And here's a couple of incidents that we were talking about here. So we'll go ahead and clear this one out there, Couples Road, 90 westbound, as uh, we saw Alex smooth sailing in that area. We also have this incident that popped up there, 35 a little bit north of Highway 90, right there at uh, Nogalitos. And then want to show you real quick about the ongoing situation on the northeast side of town. And that will be, um, especially if you're coming through in the Forum, the Live Oak area. So we're going to go to the northeast side right now and show Show you Olympia Parkway because we got a pretty good backup. This is going to be the southbound lanes. Traffic still backing up Live Oak area all the way up to the Selma area, Evans Road area. And we still have that crash being reported out there on uh, Pat Booker Road. But uh, one more quick look at our TransGuide traffic cameras. If we could get to them and we see that things are looking pretty good out there. Uh, you know, guys, you were talking about that Latin food festival. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had a pretty good infusion of Latin food uh, come into the San Antonio area. Leche de Tigre is a Peruvian place in the... Uh, on uh, South Town, um, and then also uh, Luna Rosa, also uh, Puerto Rican. It took over the old Rosario's building. So oh, yeah, some pretty good okay. spots when it comes to a lot of Latin food. That's, that's what they did coming. with that building. It's a uh, safe. It's, uh, uh, it's right there South on South Alamo. Alamo. Yes, South Alamo. yes. Okay. So that's the old Rosario's right there. These but. are all good ideas for where to Mike take Dad. Mike got thinking yes. Yeah, <laughs> that is a good idea. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I RJ. believe. If memory serves me correct, and Luna Rosa has been on the on uh, SA Live. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This was so, their second location. They yeah. moved up to that old Rosario's building there. So yeah, it's a big it's building. I think yeah. we're hungry this morning. <laughs> yeah, we are. I was going to say, no. <laughs> I've got my cinnamon Cheerios for breakfast, but it just doesn't just doesn't do it when doesn't we're talking about it. all this great food. So love the name Gus. What a good name for a dog. Gus and the cows enjoying the sunset. Yes, indeed. Ah, thank you very much. Oh, by the way, Gus is right there, kind of at the bottom of the picture, almost lost in there. So thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. All right, this doesn't look that much different. A few clouds hanging around here. A little bit of the humidity you can see off right there along the horizon. Sun is coming up, and we have temperatures in the uh, 70s right now. Been watching that latest little batch of... Uh, some storms out there well off to the northwest of the hill country, just barely working its way into Val Verde County right now. And as you can see, part of this is starting to fizzle out, and I think the whole thing is going to continue to fizzle out, which is what one of the computer models does indicate. This one has that out there, and it just dies off. And But we will still have more coming on in. So later on this afternoon and going into this evening, and again, overall, the coverage is not great at all. So rain chances are not good. If something does happen to pop up, it could become on the, the strong side, high winds, hail, and even a couple of heftier downpours, sort of like what we had yesterday morning. This is going to continue on into tonight. And notice how we'll even get another wave of this working its way on through here. And tomorrow morning, I mean, just notice how this model has some of these clusters wanting to almost form up a bit of a line. Tomorrow morning has the potential of being like yesterday with some of these storm systems coming on in here, nighttime storm complexes working their way on through. So just kind of keep in the back of your mind that tomorrow morning may be on the uh, damp side for the commute. There is the chance later on this evening, late this afternoon, this evening, some of those storms could be on the, like I said, strong, potentially severe side. High winds hail again, a couple of heavier downpours. Here's the um, the 
focus for this. Uh, what's going on this upper level low as you can see that counterclockwise rotation up there. That's what is taking these little bits of energy and throwing them down in our direction and that's what's going to throw more down in here and it's all kind of coming around this big high which is centered there just to the south and west of us and we get this northwesterly flow. So this is where these disturbances move on in. So that'll be the case today and tomorrow but then that high is just going to kind of work its way across here and what that means is it scooches on in and sits on top of us we heat up, which will be the case going into the latter part of the week and the weekend. So we're going to be in the mid 90s today as well as tomorrow. We've got a, just one or two of those showers or storms trying to pop up around here as we go into the afternoon and evening hours. Maybe a couple of stragglers tomorrow, then mid upper 90s and triple digits going into the weekend and the first part of next week. Hot again. I don't want to put you in the spot, but does that mean it continues into what we can't see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Not necessarily. We're looking at kind of mid 90s okay. going into next week. There is the chance of a little more of a flow coming in off the, the Gulf of Mexico, which would mean slightly more humidity, slightly lower temperatures, maybe a rain chance. But again, that's still a week away. It's just getting hot yeah. for Father's Day weekend. Hey, it's going to be hot. Gotcha. For Get ready. Day. Thank you, Mike. All right, time right now, 651, 75 degrees. Let's look outside with live cam. It's pleasant right now at that 75 degrees and looking really beautiful. We'll be right back. Six fifty five right now on your Tuesday morning. Quick check of our citywide map and things are looking pretty good for the most part across the city of San Antonio. Taking a look here at some of our traffic coming in eastbound from the Castroville area. Got a little bit of delays there and a little bit of delays up by Helotus over on 1604. All right, let's check in one last time with photojournalist Alex Gomez. He's been driving around for us, checking out some different spots across the greater San Antonio area. Alex, uh, we saw a sunrise there a little bit earlier. Things are looking pretty good out there. Yeah, it's a whole lot brighter now, and plus we do have some improving traffic conditions south of downtown. 35 North had a disabled vehicle right at Cesar Chavez, right on the right side, but Tech Heroes again, arriving on scene, doing some great work, and they're actually guiding that vehicle off of the highway. So 35 North, just south of downtown near Nogalitos, is going to be picking up speed again, RJ. Happy Tuesday. All right, thank you very much, Alex. Make sure to make it back safe. He's been following things for us. All right, Mike, how are things uh, feeling outside this morning? Well, not too bad as you saw a smat clouds out there temperature right now 75 degrees and we've got a little bit of humidity we're watching that uh, cluster of storms out there to the northwest that's going to continue to die down but a few more later on today one or two of those may be on the stronger side mid 90s for a high well very good we'll enjoy the little break while we get it yes today and tomorrow <laughs> thanks for joining have us. a great day we'll see you at nine